Well, night two, here are the night two ratings, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter and Dave Meltzer for WrestleMania 39. The opening match, Brock Lesnar versus Omos, uh, Omos, whatever his name is. (laughs) Did you see in their video game, they have a couple of different categories. One of them's lazy booking and one of them's almost famous. I saw that. Someone's I listening. I saw that. Someone's listening. Lesnar versus almost three stars. <sighs> okay, see, they had the tear down the house part because people like to see Brock throwing the, the big guy around, but it did, didn't all tear the house down until that point. Um, that's the kind of weasel dooley. That's the kind of match in the old days, the big giant monster man match. It, you can't tell me that it was a major draw in WrestleMania, except for Brock's involvement, just his name being advertised. It could have been Brock versus, you know, Cooter Benchley. Um, I can't see that being more than a two-star match because we're more relieved that it's over and it didn't suck. What do you think? I liked it. I liked that kind of big man match where it's short and they just kick the crap out of each other and before you get sick of it, it's over. <clears throat> and no one really got hurt. Like Anyone could have won that match. I'm okay with it there, and I agree with you. It didn't draw anyone, so it was just an added attraction. It was a big attraction match. The Giant versus the, whatever, the Sabretooth. I don't know what. The Beast. The Beast. Did you see (laughs) someone tweeted out something? I forget who it was, and I wish I could give you credit. I'm sorry. It had a Brock Lesnar thing, you know, the Beast Incarnate. And then it had a picture of Brandy on the mic, and it said, You may be the Beast Incarnate, but I'm the Bitch Incarnate. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, well actually i had somebody tweet me the fucking uh, split screen right the beast incarnate and on the other side was a freeze frame of me and severin it said the beast and cornet <laughs> i didn't see that one all right well that was lesnar versus almost a women's four-way showcase tag team match oh seriously i don't believe you watched this one either no two and a half stars all right but i'll i'll accept that so far, the Cena match. The Cena match, it, one of the three probably big draws is the lowest rated encounter. Well, no, McAfee versus The Miz has it. Oh, beat, wow. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, neither guy was even dressed, so. Gunther versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. Five star match. <sighs> okay. I will. The, the only for today's environment. I'll go with it. The fact that it was a three-way that was so confusing and they did all the modern shit they do, I, I, that to me didn't tear the house down as a stellar example of pro wrestling, maybe modern wrestling, but the stiffness and the, the overall slobber knocker atmosphere, I'll let him have that. Asuka versus Bianca Belair, three and three-quarter stars. Okay, I'm not even going to argue this fucking point. At least it goddamn wasn't as big as Charlotte and Rhea's. But I'm not going to get in the weeds on dissecting Bianca and Oscar. The Miz versus Snoop Dogg. Okay, now. (laughs) I may get down in some weed to talk about Snoop Dogg. Um... Would you like to join me down in the weeds as we talk about Snoop Dogg? Absolutely. One star match. Oh, come on. Uh, and by the way, they've announced Shane has undergone surgery. Yes, Shane. <laughs> they sent him to Dr. James Andrews. And Shane's in Birmingham. That used to be thing guys would say to the locker room to each other. I'll send you down to Birmingham. Everybody knew what that meant. I mean, there's so many different ways. As, no, as a wrestling match, it didn't deserve... I think Uncle Dave, about 30 years ago, gave one of Giant Gonzalez's matches, like negative four stars or whatever. As a wrestling match, this was what was created by Weasel Dooley to be a dud, D-U-D. And Dave doesn't use those anymore. I think he used to, but he doesn't anymore, does he? It hurts people's feelings. That's right. That I think that's a, a reason it was given, wasn't it? At one time, when he stopped doing dud. 
I forgot about Dud until you just brought it up. I forgot yeah. that existed. Yeah. Yeah, because it was one through four stars and a complete stinker, a four finger stinker. That means you need to stick all four fingers down your throat to make yourself fucking puke hard enough to get all the taste out. A four finger stinker was a dud. We talked about the Snoop Dogg Shane McMahon incident and commended Snoop Dogg for jumping into action now. Oh, thinking ahead. Yes, but as a pro wrestling match, the whole, and really you ought to rate two matches. You ought to rate Shane McMahon versus Miz, which which when you think about it, Shane Shane's drop down was beautiful and his leapfrog was gorgeous till the landing. You know what? We had so much fun talking about that the other day. There's two big things we left out. One <laughs> <laughs> Somebody left him. <laughs> when Shane was in midair, <laughs> Michael Cole starts with, he still got it. And he, lands, <laughs> and he fucking tears his claw. He still got it. And there it went. That was amazing. And, and again, he's had it. And Snoop Dogg saved the day. We didn't talk about his running of the ropes where he didn't lift either arm he, yeah, he, he would just, just turn around and like lean back well remember i kind of <laughs> glossed over it when i said it looked like shit till it got there and then it hurt but everything to the lead up to the people's elbow yes but see again there's a I, some fans pick up on it just because they've seen it visually but you would be surprised some people that watch wrestling like snoop dogg obviously has for quite a percentage of his life and they still run at those ropes, and it's almost like they're running into a goddamn electrified fence or something. They're just, oh, shit, they just clinch up. And that's what he did. And then again, and then the stopping. And when he brought that elbow down, though, you can, you can tell a shoot elbow drop when the point of the fucking elbow to the sternum is the very first thing that makes contact. Right then, you know you've been dropped an elbow on. Hey. In terms of the way he ran the ropes, I'm laughing about it because it looked so ridiculous. I'm used to seeing yeah. wrestlers run the ropes. If you have a celebrity, if you're the booker and you have a celebrity on your show, you're going to use them for whatever reason in the ring and they're going to run the ropes. Do you want them to run like that? Like they have no idea how to do it? As opposed <laughs> to like, train me so I could do it really well like you guys. And then all of a well, sudden they're running the ropes the way that, how would the layman get in there and run the ropes like that? You want something in between. Remember, the porridge needs to be neither too cold nor too hot. It looks, it, it not only calls attention to uh, an aspect of phoniness when somebody runs the ropes like Snoop Dogg did because it was obviously phony and he didn't know what he was doing, but also if he'd have accidentally had any more momentum he could have hurt himself if you hit the ropes and you don't have an arm over the top, then you've seen guys, you know, go straight through backwards, snap the fucking neck, you know, whatever the cut, you get whiplash. I wouldn't, depending on the celebrity, if it was a celebrity from another professional sport, well, then you got something to work with. If it's goddamn, you know, a musician, you might try to not have them in a perfect world hit the ropes to begin with, but almost anybody can run and lean into the ropes to get some momentum for something and look like they're going to do something if you just explain to them how. So if Snoop had to, like three miles an hour going on, if somebody really takes off from about eight feet away and hits those ropes to get some momentum to do something, then that's not something that needs a lot of training except how not to fucking fall out of the ring or break your neck when you're doing it. So if I had a celebrity that was being set up to do something like that, I would teach them the basics of here's how not to fucking hurt yourself. And, the, you know, but then whatever it is, it is. My rating for that match, five stars. <laughs> I knew it. Five star match. I had a great time. I popped like crazy. <laughs> Couple more matches. Hell in a Cell, Finn Balor versus Edge. Three and three quarter stars. Oh, God. We talked about the issues with that. And, you know, I can't deny them the, 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 the enjoyment of nearly getting four stars from Uncle Dave for all the physical abuse they went through, even if there was a lot of problems with presentation and execution of that match. 
And finally, the main event, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, four and a half stars. See, that that was a five-star match with a one-star finish. Should that take overall points away in your eyes? Uh, yeah, well, and see, that's the thing. When you, if you, if you have... 98% of the best sex you ever had followed by either a goddamn tree falling through the roof right before you come or fucking a home invasion at gunpoint at the end of it. Do you really want to remember that for the rest of your life? From that day forward, they called me treetop. <laughs> I agree with you. I thought it was an excellent match. I think if Cody had gotten the victory and it had been a celebration and clearly the fans were ready to go crazy. It would have been a perfect moment, a perfect match. 